Valorant's 2024, though it has just begun, has been headlined by young players and rookies. Looking done, and that is devastating. If that's how you go down, Hoodie just powering forward. It's done! And it's done. Former Challengers North America players like John QT and Narrate have been pivotal in their respective team's successes, both capturing their region's kickoff trophies and making Masters Madrid. With all the fresh faces making waves across regions in VCT, the question on everyone's mind is, Who's up next? In an era of Valorant where your Sentinel and Initiator players are fragging as hard as your Duelist, a guy like Verno seems handcrafted to fit this new mold. But Mitch, not able to get the tree. Oh, no way! Oh, Verno! Verno has been competing for Oxygen since he was just 15 years old, starting on their academy team back in February of 2022. He has continued to grow as a player throughout his tenure, and his fragging ability took center stage during Oxygen's offseason, where he put all his skill on full display. Clone? Okay, I mean... Wait, at least there's one. Oh! Oh! It's a oh his fragging ability is the cherry on top of his excellent initiator play on Sova, but he's also found himself flexing over to the Sentinel role and playing a lot of Killjoy. Oxygen as a whole are one of the favorites to ascend to VCT Americas, but no matter how things play out, Verno is sure to shine this season. Next up, a fresh face who made a name for himself with some star-making performances in the open qualifier, Skarn. Just from a statistical point of view, Skarn was nothing short of amazing for Sad. Amongst players who played a minimum of 100 rounds in the first open qualifier, Skarn led all players with an average ACS of 288.3, a KD ratio of 1.61, 181.7 average damage per round, and 1.06 kills per round. These types of statistics are, simply put, unreal. It's not just the numbers, though. He consistently showed up to make huge plays, including the 1v2 that secured sad spot in challengers. Opening cubby tossed out, infiltrator coaxed away, but that'll get darkest. Scarn the refrag onto jerk. Now that tower presence is back, but that garage is not infiltrator to a crime. It will no doubt be difficult to replicate such stat lines against the competition that awaits in challengers North America. However, if he can perform at a level that is even remotely close to what he showed in the first open qualifier, well, we could be looking at North America's next star duelist. Carrying on with the theme of cracked duelist players, I'd be remiss not to talk about Zeldris. Zeldris is looking to build upon his former challengers NA experience as a member of OR Esports. Their 2023 season didn't go exactly as planned, as they would finish in the bottom four and miss out on the end of season playoffs. Zeldris himself, though, had some flashes of brilliance as he is an exceptionally talented Jet and Rays player. His best streak of performances came during OR Esports' run in the play and relegation tournament, and he built upon this upswing in performance coming into 2024. His performance for Core in the second open qualifier was nothing short of excellent. And he's gonna check it, no flash. He got punished for it while well, Seldris with the quick instances. So let the 2v2 though finds the back of one and he lines up Zeldris with the ace round one. He averaged an absurd 322.9 ACS, a KD ratio of 1.73, 199.3 average damage per round, and 1.14 kills per round. In my opinion though, the 0.29 first kills per round exemplify his value as an entry fragger. Just like Skarn though, he'll have to battle higher level competition through the duration of an entire season, but his potential as he gains more and more experience is limitless. Speaking of players making their return to challengers, you really can't talk about the next generation of NA Valorant talent without mentioning Adder. He's another player whose team had a rough go in 2023, but he stuck with Turtle Troop through thick and thin and was a bright spot for the team during their struggles in 2023. Many have sung the praises of Adder as next in line already. If Adder can live up to the hype, we're going to bear witness to something truly special. Adder, 1v1 with Flyer. Flash will not land. Ah, oh, and Adder takes the 1v1. Vic was a very hyped prospect for last year's iteration of Shopify Rebellion. 
He was a truly special player coming into the league who supplied ludicrous amounts of firepower, and expectations were through the roof for him. And while Vic was good for a few explosive multi-kills a game last year, his team didn't see the success that they'd hoped for with the newcomer. Vic certainly had his moments in 2023, but didn't quite reach the heights that some believe that he was capable of. Vic was flexing all over the place for Shopify Rebellion, perhaps stretching himself just a bit too thin. The 2024 season though brings with it new and perhaps even greater expectations for Vic as Shopify's merger with Moist Moguls has brought a ton of new eyes. Moist X Shopify competed in a multitude of off-season events, with one thing remaining consistent across them all, struggling to beat Oxygen. The team went 1-4 and four against Oxygen in the offseason, which concerned fans greatly because their opening match of the 2024 Challengers North America season would be against Oxygen. If Moistec Shopify got off to another slow start, well, they could be in for a very long season. Vic, however, rose to the occasion. Playing Omen, Brimstone, and Cypher across the three-map series, he put up comparable numbers to the team's star duelist, Mata. It's only a single game, but if Vic can keep this up, he'll be giving teams headaches all season long and will almost certainly end up on a VCT team's radar. Finally, we have to talk about Bones. Bones has, despite or maybe because of his age, played every role there is in the game. He has recently transitioned into a controller player, but before that he was playing a mix of Initiator and Sentinel, despite Ray's being his most played agent of all time. He performed well during YFP's run through the first open qualifier, despite this being the first time that he's ever played against Challenger's level competition due to his age. As he grows more accustomed to the new environment, we could truly see him come into his own and turn some heads. The fact that he is, as of this moment, just 16 years old leaves a ton of room for him to grow as a player. Those were just a handful of the outrageously talented players competing in Challengers North America this year. And without a doubt, there will be talents that didn't get mentioned in this video that surprise us all with breakout seasons. With the amount of talent that Challengers North America harbors, we will certainly see some players make the leap to VCT, be it this year or the next. And with that, we loop right back to the question posed at the very beginning of this video. This time though, I'd like you to answer. Who's up next?